Let's talk now about banking. And in particular, let's connect with the Illinois Bankers Association's Randy Holtgren here with Springfield's Morning News. I'm Greg Bishop on 92.7 WMAY, Springfield's News and Talk. Uh, Randy, I appreciate you taking the time. I find myself more and more using online banking and the function of... Well, essentially depositing checks using my cell phone. Uh, and uh, at first I was a little apprehensive. I'm like, ah, this is kind of, eh. But then again, when, you know, for instance, I think the most recent check I got, which I don't get too many checks, everything seems to be direct deposited, uh, but the most recent checks I've gotten have been settlements from like, uh, you know, Snapchat or from uh, Facebook. And I've been using the uh, the on- <laughs> the online function yep. uh, to, to put those into my bank account. Uh, But talk about check fraud and how, um, well, it seems to be a big problem. And how are you guys getting a handle of that? Good morning. Hey, good morning, Greg. So good to be with you. Thanks for having me. And uh, appreciate you and your show so much and your listeners as well. Yeah, you know, uh, we just want to make consumers aware. uh, Bankers are there to help you, uh, to, to guide you through. I'm the same way. Uh, You know, that is just, I'm so grateful for the convenience of, phone banking, uh, you know, where it's pretty rare that I have to go into a bank lobby, but it's also good to know that it's there if I need it. If I've got a question, if I've got a problem, there's really good people uh, who love helping people who work at banks. So anyhow, we have seen just a dramatic increase. This was something, you know, like 20, 30, 40 years ago was a big deal of, of check fraud. Uh, and now we've just seen this huge rise of criminals doing this, using uh, check fraud to steal people's hard-earned money. I mean, we just seen in the last year, it's like Almost 24,000, I think it's 23,900 Illinois consumers and businesses were victims of check fraud. It's up 86% since 2021, 350% over the last decade. So it's it's something that criminals are looking at of seeing an opportunity there. And it's it's not cheap. Uh, it's uh, Average check fraud is about $2,400 uh, expense lost. Uh, and so we just want consumers to be aware of what's going on. Uh, again, I think people are using less and less checks, but when they are using checks, just to be careful with them, especially when they're writing checks, uh, to make sure that they know that these frauds are going on. So uh, a couple main ones uh, we'll just cover quickly, if that's okay, Greg. One is called check washing, uh, where we're hearing of uh, checks getting stolen out of mailboxes. There's even stories uh, read about up in Chicago, especially with uh, postal service workers, their keys getting stolen so people can get access to these post office boxes taking mail, really sifting through to find checks in there. And then they use chemicals and things to kind of take off uh, maybe the name of uh, who it was written to or the amount. And they'll increase this uh, significantly or make it so they can write it directly to themselves or to uh, a fake business or something that they're going to have to try and get this. Uh, So that's one way this uh, check washing. um, And again, it's important for people just to be aware of it. Be careful if you're mailing checks, uh, just to make sure that you're not leaving stuff in your mailbox for a long time. Another one that we're hearing a lot about is uh, fake checks. And it's really so much opportunity. You know, a lot of people are using Facebook marketplace or other things to be able to buy and sell things from other people. Great service, a great way to connect and sell things. But, you know, again, there's some people out there trying to do harm uh, and aren't uh, do have some uh, bad motives. And so what we hear is uh, with fake checks and overpayment scams. So especially with a larger item, like a a vehicle or something that might be a little bit more expensive where someone will contact the seller and say, I want to buy it. I need to write you a check. Uh, They show up to write a check and then they maybe, you know, have a excuse to write it for more than what they had agreed to. Uh, and they say, oh, you know what, go ahead and just deposit it and wire me the money back, the difference. You know, hey, we're, I was going to buy it for 2000 I accidentally wrote it for 3000 Just wire me back the, the extra $1,000. Well, what happens is once that money is deposited, the money gets wired back, and then the check bounces. And it's a significant loss uh, for consumers. So on all of this, it's, it's, it's awareness. It's recognizing that you know, people, unfortunately, um, there's – a very small number of people out there trying to do bad things and trying to take money, hard earned money from families and consumers out there and bankers. Uh, we want to just protect people, help them to know that there's 
good things that they can do just to protect themselves and to protect their families. We're talking with Randy Holtgren. He is with the Illinois Bankers Association and uh, putting out that warning for consumers and families to just be mindful of different types of fraud schemes that can happen uh, when it comes to check washing or other things. So uh, make sure that, uh, hey, you know, a lot of people are doing online transactions and whatnot, but uh, still there's a lot of checks that do get written and sent around and you just got to be real cautious uh, as to where those ultimately go. Uh, Randy, of course, uh, the Illinois State House is uh, back into action. They're uh, both coming back today. Got the governor's state of the state and budget address uh, tomorrow. Uh, and then spring session will be really going forward in earnest. Uh, what are you guys keeping your eyes on there at the Illinois State House with the Illinois Bankers Association? Yeah, you know, we keep our eyes on everything. Uh, for us, it's we'd love just to, to see... Um, Inflation go down, economy go up, uh, more opportunities for people. That's what banking is all about, is helping people pursue their dreams. It's one of the things I love working with bankers, uh, wonderful people who are just passionate about helping people make good decisions and be able to plan for the future, to be able to pursue their dreams, whether that's college education or a car or home or retirement. I think about it, you know, just about every key that I've ever had in my life a banker helped me get that key. And so, I, again, I love it about bankers, but we're always nervous. <laughs> I served in the legislature for 12 years, served in Congress eight years, and uh, just always nervous of government stepping in and taking away uh, opportunities from people. So one of the things that we're, it's kind of perennial bill that gets filed is uh, to have a government-run bank, basically like a, a post office becoming the bank for people. Uh, and that, that scares us. Uh, there's wonderful banks out there. I mean, just in your uh, listening area, literally people would have dozens and dozens and dozens of great options of community banks, some medium-sized, some larger banks, uh, where there's people who would love to help them. Uh, and so just encouraging people, use that great resource that you have. And we're encouraging government leaders to say, you know what, this isn't the best solution uh, to have you know, like a DMV of banking uh, is really not something that uh, would serve people well, serve families well, when it is something so important as them pursuing their dreams, saving for their future, saving for their families and grandkids. Uh, so that's one of the things we watch for, certainly, that, that goes on. Continuing banking, again, is uh, very safe. Uh, we're always looking. We talk about scams that are out there, but being on top of that, helping people be aware of watching for those things. Um, but also uh, just making sure that regulation of banking uh, works well, but isn't so overwhelming that it drives banks um, out of communities. It's a huge loss when a community loses that community bank. And so vast, vast majority of our members of the Illinois Bankers Association are smaller community banks. And uh, again, these are great people. The first ones to just step up when there's a crisis, when there's a need, when there's a storm, when there's uh, you know an illness in the community, something like that. Uh, bankers are really the first one to step up and say, hey, let's help uh, these families. So we want to keep doing that. We also are always watching out in Washington, D.C., just trying to make sure that uh, uh, legislation out there doesn't hinder, again, the opportunity for someone to be able to, to have a, a relationship um, with a banker who can be an advisor to them. And so always looking at uh, some things. There's some legislation out in Washington that we're concerned about that really would take away uh, some credit card options for people. I know my family and I really appreciate the miles that we get uh, or other benefits that we get with uh, credit card programs. There's some legislation that uh, would, I think, really destroy a lot of those good programs that people have come to appreciate with credit cards. One last thing uh, that we're always focused on is financial literacy of training up people to be good consumers of their own finances, especially young people. And so uh, a couple months away, but in April, we've got financial literacy month. We're doing a lot of things to uh, help communities and help families and especially help students uh, understand early credit and debt and taxes and all of these different things that they need to understand. So uh, we're involved in a lot of different things, but ultimately we just love to help people. Randy Holgren, there's a lot there, and I imagine that uh, we could talk about uh, each one of those things in more detail. Uh, maybe we find some more time in the future to do let's just do it. that. That would be great. Uh, appreciate the I time, and uh, let's connect again soon. All right, be safe out there. Thanks, Greg. It Take is care. Springfield's Morning News on 92.7 WMAY.